Common Ground is a movie that is the follow-up to the movie Kiss the Earth, which you may or may not have seen on Netflix. It came out in 2020. It's an amazing movie about the agriculture industry and how the soil is being tainted with pesticides and herbicides. And that's really leading to the ill health of the planet and ill health of our bodies. Common Ground is probably not in a theater near you because it's only in these theaters right here. Here are the dates and times. Well, not the times, but the dates and locations is what I meant to say of where it is going to be showing. I just saw this one in Santa Monica with one of the directors and producers, Josh, was there and actually my partner was on the panel that spoke afterwards, Dave Sandoval with Perium. These movies are amazing because we've been working with detoxifying and nourishing human bodies because of the stuff that is covered in this movie. The food supply is tainted. There's poisons in the planet, in the soil, in the earth. Those are all the same thing, planet, earth, soil. Ground, Gaia, in the air, in the in the water. That's where I meant to be going with that. But I wanted to make this movie just to go over a little bit about what is covered in this because, as I said, it is not going to be in a theater near you really soon. And Josh said afterwards that Kiss the Earth was actually contracted by Netflix before they even watched it. So it was on Netflix for a year before the heads at Netflix even knew what it was about. And they have seen this movie and they have expressed disinterest in streaming it because there's things in there that they would like removed. So let's talk about it. First, let's watch the preview. What I'm about to tell you is a matter of life and death. If the soil dies, we die. The facts have been proven. Roundup does cause cancer. If you burrow deeply enough, there is a pipeline of money from the pesticide industry into those universities. That part. They're getting the kind of science that money can buy. Nature is the mother of us all. And if mama ain't happy, we're f But there's a way to save our precious soils. It's called regeneration. Regeneration is not just restoring the land to the state that we found it at, but actually making it better. We have added over 96 tons of carbon per acre into our soil. Can we mitigate climate change? Absolutely. We're going to check the underwear and the regenerative versus the conventional soybean field and see if we can tell a difference between the microbial activity. We've eliminated insecticides, pesticides, herbicides. We are saving upwards of $400 an acre. It works out to be about $2 million a year in savings. That is serious cash. I forgot my suit. I feel like I'm underdressed. But if you are the people who can make a change, well, it's high time to finally get regenerative agriculture. Let's prioritize the farmer. Out here in the fields It's a connection to the land. It's a connection to those that came before us and those that are going to come after us. Take my hand. We can change everything. There's hope. I set this letter as a warning, but it's also a promise. So I'm going to fight like hell to save your future, my children. Because I love you. Let's get 
Join the movement. So this is more of a movement than it is a movie. The movie adds to the movement, but you got demanded at your theater here. So this is an option for people who are interested in this. This movie really goes into the difference between regenerative farming and industrial or commercial farming. And basically one of the, the differences is that industrial farming emphasizes tilling the earth with giant machines and spraying the food while regenerative practices do no tilling. They don't destroy the earth. They, they let it interact with each other and build symbiotic relationships with the fungus and the bacteria and the soil and the plants and the animals and the water. They leave it to do its thing. And as a result of that, there's no spraying needed. And it produces food with greater amounts of nutrients and less dis-ease as a result of that. If you look at what's going on with the humans on this planet, there is massive amount of disease. And if we go back to that part where I said this part, this part where, let's see if I can find it here, where they, this money flow right here. Getting the kind of science that money can buy. Getting the kind of science that money can buy because... Who fuels the pesticide industry into those? All right. So we've got the agriculture or the chemical companies that are paying the universities. The universities are teaching the farmers how to farm. They go out and they farm and they got this knowledge that they're, they are to scrape off the dirt spray it with chemicals and grow the seeds that they buy from companies like Monsanto. And essentially what ends up happening is the farmers are now serfs or slaves to the industry because the farmers all need to buy seeds in the system. They all need to buy chemicals in the system and they, they even need to buy large machines in this system. And all of that is where the profits go and very little goes to the farmer. So the farmer is working their entire life and giving the earnings to big corporations. Now, where do the machines come into play? So if you think about World War II, what ended up happening out of World War II is that we developed and had a large industrial military complex. America is, North America, United States of America is very good at building machinery, which is why it loves war, because it gets to supply the world with guns, ammunition, tanks, helicopters, killing machines. And on the downtime in between war efforts, these machines, these politicians, these shareholders of these companies still need to rake in the money to pull in a profit. And they do that with the farmers because everybody eats. Food is in, is very, very big business. Huge big business. I'm trying to remember a book and speak at the same time. It, it led to a slip up there. There's a book called The Fish That Ate the Whale or Swallowed the Whale. The, the Fish That Ate the Whale, I believe it was what it's called. And it's about the food industry. And it's about what I remember, it's about the banana business and, and why there's only one type of banana now and how that type of banana wiped out all the other variations of bananas and how that all happened. And there's another Netflix documentary series um, that I only watched like half an episode on avocados. I forget the name of it. That talks about basically how food is run by the mafia because everybody eats food is huge business and organized i'm going to say it criminal based people are definitely going to get into that big business because there's so much to gain so the money flows to keep farmers imprisoned 
Now, what this movie also talks about is glyphosate. Glyphosate is something, so this is my business partner, David Sandoval. Glyphosate is the herbicide. So in the first movie, we talked about the actual person that developed pesticides and how he came out of Germany after developing the gas that was in the gas chambers that killed millions of people, not just Jews, but millions and tens of millions of people died in those in those concentration camps, died to gas, died to just people gunning them down. And that person, again, was able to take that knowledge of poison and apply it to what? Something that's widely used all over the world, manufacturing food. And so once you have that knowledge, you can copyright it, patent it, and then sell it to the masses and then develop policies in the legislations of the governments worldwide to assure that these techniques are utilized so that the whole industry, all of the farmers worldwide, then are almost forced to buy these chemicals. So chemical like glyphosate, which is produced by what used to be called Monsanto, but they ejected and sold themselves to Bayer to hopefully deal with all the lawsuits that they're they're losing. These graphs right here show, so this is the book called The Toxin That Came to Dinner. I'll link it in the, in the notes. But if you see here, this would be the trend, okay? The natural trend is the green line. This is what incidence of liver and intrahepatic bile duct cancer. So that's a long sentence I was trying to avoid saying, but this is the trend, the natural trend before glyphosate was introduced. When glyphosate gets introduced, you see that the rates of the liver cancer do not follow the trend. What do they do? They follow another line. They fi follow glyphosate usage. All right, so some of these graphs are like exactly, exactly. Glyphosate, genetically engineered soy, and so that's what the green is. It's genetically engineered soy in corn crops. Now, the gen why does the genetically engineered soy in cor corn crops, crops matter in this case? Because GE foods are so that the herbicide glyphosate, so glyphosate's an herbicide, it destroys the earth, it destroys the biome of the planet, and it also, when we eat it, it goes into us and it destroys our microbiome in our gut, which leads to, as you can see from these charts, nationwide increases of cancers that are completely correlative with the glyphosate usage. Urinary bladder cancer. Look at this. More glyphosate being used, the more GE crops being used to survive within that glyphosate, the more of these cancers. Thyroid cancer. Pre-glyphosate in GE crops, that trend should just be here, right? Roughly three to four per 100,000 people. Well, now it's jumping up. What is that, like five times increase? Look at these perfectly correlative graphs. Hypertension, deaths due to stroke, obesity. Lots of people dealing with obesity that just think it's genetic, not realizing that it's the food supply. Diabetes. Look at these. Once again, the genetically modified, genetically engineered crops are the seeds that Monsanto sells to the farmers that are Roundup resistant seeds, which means that they produce these crops of soy and corn and that's the the main subsidized crops 
on all of the farmland across the United States of America and probably a lot of other places in the world, well, it's subsidized in the U.S. is soy and corn. I want to say wheat too. But they're, they're in everything. High fructose corn syrup is used as a sweetener in all sorts of things. What was that one? Renal disease, IBS. These are just glyphosate usages now. So you can see there's cor correlations. This is intestinal infection. Check, take a look at this one. Autism. Now, there's a lot of people thinking that the, the, the thing that you get poked with uh, is related to autism. And I've spoken to many people, and I know many people who have children who are autistic. And the story that you commonly hear is the lights were on before they went and got the thing. I can't even say it because then I'm, this video is going to get flagged before they go and get the thing. And then after the thing, the lights are off. That's, that's basically in a nutshell what a lot of people say about their autistic kids. Now, what does that mean? When I look at that, what I know to be true is that autistic kids have very compromised guts. And I know that because Dave gives dietary recommendations for the for a lot of autistic communities and groups. And he also has a nonprofit that is directly for the families of nonprofit organizations. My wife and I have been there. She's been to a few. I've been to one volunteering. How do I stop this share? Stop. So this is a question that I pondered. Like, are is autism, I don't even want to say cause, but just in my head, is autism caused by the, the thing or is it caused by glyphosate? And what I know is that autistic kids have very compromised gut. Now, the question I asked when I started hearing that, because at the retreats that we cooked at, there were, we had to remove all of the seeds from all of the food, like even bananas. There's tons of seeds in bananas that we don't realize. There's seeds in tomatoes. So if we wanted to make tomato sauce, we had to scrape out all the seeds and just use the outside, the fleshy outside portion of tomatoes. We had to cut out all the seeds of everything because the autistic children at the retreat didn't have the ability to digest the seeds. Now, the question I asked myself is, did autism cause this inability of the digestive system or was the digestive system of most autistic kids compromised before the, and then they couldn't metabolize the things that got injected into them and then that led to autism. And this is, again, me just freely exploring with my mind about this. I don't know if any of this is true, and I hope this isn't offensive to anybody that's dealing with challenges around having somebody that is on the spectrum that they, they know and love or, or maybe even care for or are themselves. But what I get gather from looking at this chart is that glyphosate, high ingestion of foods that have glyphosate in it is going to compromise the gut, the gut lining. And then when you take the children to go get those mandatory things, they are not able to handle and metabolize because there's so many of these things happening at a very young age. And then that leads to autism in people that had disruptive systems to begin with. And that's my theory on that. And why do I even have a theory on that? Because we work with getting glyphosate out of the human body. We are the only people that have, well, at the time, I'm not sure if there's other companies that have come out. I know there are other companies that help people deal with glyphosate, but at one point we were the only 
product that had been certif- certified, proven, proven to and certified to remove glyphosate from the human body. And that product is called Biomedic, which again, I've got a discount code in the notes and also... I'll show you some stuff right now about it. Then we'll get back to Common Ground. But this is such an important film because it brings to light a lot of these problems such as glyphosate. All right, so Biomedic is right here. And this is essentially a gut revolution. So we've got programs that that people have all sorts of issues let's just say and within months they become completely different people i just want to show you the ingredients so this is based off of an old farmer's cocktail that they made to save their cows because glyphosate is a something that takes minerals out of pipes so if they're sprinklers, if they're sprinklers, so even before it was just sprayed on food to kill it, the the sprinklers needed to get cleaned out so they would run glyphosate through it and it would pull out the minerals. That's also what it's doing in our body. But as it did that and sprayed onto the field, it would start killing the cows. So the farmers made up a similar formulation to this and what actually happens here is that the humic and fulvic acid go into the body. The chicory root actually opens up the cells. It kind of unlocks the cells. The humic and fulvic acid are like magnets for things like glyphosate and heavy metals. And it latches onto it and pulls it out of the body. It ushers it out of the body. Then we've got these pre and probiotics to start rebuilding the gut lining and that allows people to start digesting their food which is one of the primary things when it comes to health when it comes to health what matters is that have i even been sharing the screen well i guess i gave you the ingredients so it doesn't matter i don't think i was sharing the screen nah it's all right so the ingredients are amazing i've got Lots of information on this. As I said, big discount on that. We also have packages that include this and guaranteed money back to transform your life. That's the whole point because it does. Now, back to the movie. So the the movie talks about the farming bill, which is a bill that's supposed to, it's like the subsidies that I talked about, which is now going to corn, soy, I also believe wheat farmers that produce the candy, the cereal, the fast food that Americans eat so much of and cause them to be sick because those foods are not functional for the body. In order for human bodies to be healthy, it needs to do three primary things. The diet needs to be nourishing. It needs to facilitate detoxification. And it also needs to have the components to repair the body and a lot of the food that's just made of genetically engineered corn soy and wheat with some sugar sprinkled on top which was made from the corn so it's still one of those three and sprayed with chemicals such as glyphosate it's going to go into the body it's going to prevent absorption of nutrients so there's it's not very nourishing it is actually toxinating it's it's putting the toxins i know that's not a word into the body. So is it detoxifying? No, it's the opposite. It's actually toxic. And there's not very much fuel or components to rebuild itself because the food's not even real. It's it's a food that's just a death food to produce sickness. And then the same people, the same organizations that produce the food also have stock, have ownership of the pharmaceutical company, which then provides the solution for the sickness. 
And this is kind of like a profit cycle, right? They produce the problem and they produce the solution. So if you really want to be making a lot of money and gain a lot of power on this planet, you you produce these profit cycles, you produce a problem and a solution at the same time. And that's a key to basically always having people in this cycle. Another thing that the movie talked about was the farmer suicides. So I used to think or know that dentists used to be the highest suicide occupation. And apparently now, according to the movie, farmers are, which is crazy to think about because dentists, you could see like they're under a lot of stress. They've got lots of bills. There's lots of work. If you ever go to a dentist's office, like around a lot of machines in an office underneath lights, not, not a very happy environment. They're always inflicting pain on other people. And then there's this massive amount of bills. Well, farmers are kind of, they've surpassed that. And it's because all of their money goes back to more genetically modified seeds, more chemicals, more machinery. And it's just a lot of stress. So Go see this movie. Do I have anything? I'm going to go to the movie. Let's go to the movie page one more time. Go to this website, commongroundfilm.com. If you see here, there's a join the movement. There's a food guide. In join the movement, there's actually some... Uh, no. There's... Take, take action is where I wanted to go. In this take action page, there's this little checklist. You can join the movement, which is what I was just talking about. You can grow the movement so you can share the film with other people. You can actually buy a ticket for somebody else, follow them on social media, and join the 100 Million Acres Club. Their goal is to have 100 million acres in regenerative farming as opposed to industrial farming by 2025 is what he said at the talk, but I don't know if it's, it said 2050 on the screen, but I guess they moved it up to 2025. But this movie is amazing. It educates you on how carbon gets from the atmosphere into the earth and how dirt and soil is most valuable if there's carbon in it. And we all kind of hear about this carbon thing. Well, what is carbon? Carbon is life. We are carbon-based life forms. So if the soil has a lot of carbon in it, that means that it has the remnants of living matter in it. If you ever go into a forest, it's different dirt. It's soil. Soil has broken up leaves and twigs and little small particles of grass. And you can see if you pick it up, it's not necessarily just crushed rock. When you go into the desert, that's what you see. That's the desertification of soil. It turns into dirt, which then turns into dust and it blows away. So farmers are having this huge problem with making their dirt into soil, the industrial revolution or the industrial way. And they're losing a lot of money to having to put fertilizer in it. When fertilizer is natural, the life cycle of the planet provides enough fertilized soil to grow crops in, to grow plants in that will nourish the earth. It holds water. Dirt doesn't really hold water very good. It, water runs on the top of it. Soil allows water to penetrate and it goes down and it feeds the roots of plants. And those roots do what? They grow down even further. And where do they get their basis of growth from? Well, a plant is that cellulose, right? And cellulose is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, where does the plant get those three things? Well, it gets the carbon from the CO2 that it pulls out of the air. In photosynthesis, it pulls the CO2 out of the air and breaks the CO2. And when it breaks the CO2, it keeps the carbon and it releases the O2, the oxygen. And that's why we say 
that trees give us oxygen, but really they're pulling in the carbon dioxide, breaking it, keeping the carbon, releasing the oxygen. So it's, it's, it's transmuting CO2 into oxygen. Now it keeps that carbon and I've mentioned cellulose and even carbohydrate, carb, carbon, hydrogen, hydrate, and, and oxygen is what makes up carbohydrate. Oxygen and hydrogen make up water, right? So carbohydrate, hydrate is water, right? So that's actually where carbohydrate comes from. Carbon and hydration, water, which is H2O. So it pulls up water from the earth and it takes the hydrogen and the oxygen from the water because you're like, why does it give off oxygen? Because it's taking in more oxygen from the water and that's what it uses to produce its cellulose and its carbohydrates, which is the sugar and the fructose in the fruit. So that is how plants take the carbon out of the air, unlatch it from the CO2 and release the oxygen and it takes that carbon and it stores it in its own cells as cellulose in the roots, which go into the earth. And if the plant is harvested and or dies, all of that carbon now turns into the soil, which then a future plant or the same plant in the future can then grab and turn into the tree or the plant above and produce fruit and vegetable matter for us and for other animals. Brings the birds, it brings the bees. Gaia is the personification of the earth. And Gaia is... I would even say the original name of earth or, or at least the, the natural name of earth. Earth is living. Earth, the planet, is, is the Western way of explaining Gaia because Gaia is a living entity. And then we just turned it into, it's a planet that happened through a dust cloud. It was like the leftover stardust of an exploded star. <laughs> And we come up with this name Earth and we just don't look at it as living, but it is very much so living. And I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Very much so living. So we can work towards a solution. Watch, Find a way to watch this movie. Go to a theater. Request it at a theater. He mentioned, Josh mentioned, that the the streamers said that he has to take stuff out of this movie in order for it to be acceptable for them to stream to the masses. So I hope that he can maneuver through that process with this movie as I seen it, with everything in it, because it did go into a lot. It went into racism as well in the agriculture industry. And this is something that we are all responsible for. And there's solutions coming down the pipeline. There's a lot of people that are interested in this, which means that the people that are creative and knowledgeable in this field, like David Sandoval and the company Perium, which is myself and many of our team has been like this movie is about the this about Gaia, the health of Gaia. And what we do at Perium is about the health of the human body. As a result of glyphosate that's sprayed on our food, how do we get our body back to optimal health? How do we get it nourishing, detoxified, and repairing itself so that we can maintain a homeostasis consistent with health as opposed to dis ease? The, the, not that we should say cure or health, the cure or heal at all, because our products are not intended to cure, diagnose, or treat any disease. 
illness, malady. We have to say these disclaimers, right? Because we could we could get shut down or sued or or whatever. But what I can say is that the antidote to any disease or any sickness is health. And our products support you into building health, no matter how you're eating. If your diet is functional, you will strive towards health. Get a diet that is nourishing, detoxifying, and repairing. Thank you all for listening. See the show notes. Share this. Share the the commongroundfilm.org, and I hope everybody gets to see it. And if you have not seen Kiss the Earth, watch it right now. It's an amazingly entertaining and informative movie.